tonight on a special edition of Evening. Join us as we bring you stories from beautiful Bainbridge Island, where you can walk through one of the top 10 gardens in the country. We call this place a sort of a secret gem. From the sea to the table, see why Bainbridge is a dining destination. Plus the distillery producing some of the best whiskey in the world. Hey, congratulations, you won Craft Whiskey of the Year. I didn't even know. Hey, I'm Jim Dever with a special edition of Evening. We just got off the ferry to bring you some stories from one of our favorite getaways, Bainbridge Island. Named after a famous soldier from the War of 1812, Bainbridge is home to around 25,000 people who live here full time. Tonight we'll meet a few of them, plus we'll show you some spots you should check out for yourself. First up, there are lots of beautiful places to see on Bainbridge, but one is ranked one of the best in the world. We call this place a sort of a secret gem. We are actually one of the 10 best and most renowned public gardens in the United States. Bloedel Reserve opened to the public in the late 80s. It was a private residence, a private estate, and the Prentice and Virginia Bloedel lived here with their children for 30 years. He hired different landscape architects and landscape designers to help him and uh, his wife sculpt this land, which is 140 acres of native forest here on Bainbridge Island, into a curated series of gardens that flow through the property. The residence was built in the early 1930s. It's a French colonial design. Currently, the downstairs of the residence is open to the public. When you visit the reserve, you'll experience an incredible layering of native forests and cultivated gardens. The beauty of that is you're able to more deeply understand the Pacific Northwest and its plantings, as well as see some extremely exotic species. The moss garden is one of very few completely devoted to the species of mosses. And so our moss garden was cultivated from scratch out of the native forest by planting thousands of Irish moss plugs. We have hundreds of other species of moss there and we carefully weed and cultivate that area to remove any other types of plantings that might interfere with the moss. So you're left with this very, almost a Jurassic quality of, of passing through very aged woods and moss covered stones and logs. It's a very peaceful area. The Japanese garden is modeled after a traditional Japanese strolling garden. There's a pond, there's a sand and stone garden, and the structure there, which we call the Japanese guest house, was originally the Bloedel's guest house for their friends when they came to visit. And the sand and stone garden was originally a swimming pool. The reflection pool is probably the most formal of our gardens here at the reserve. It was designed to feel like you're in a room. So it's a long rectangular space that's surrounded by a very formal U hedge. And then the pool itself reflects the sky. Visitors are completely awed by Bloedel Reserve. Something happens between the time where they arrive, uh, pass through all these beautiful landscapes, it's a rarity to have this amount of land, 140 acres, reserved and set aside for anybody to come visit. Man, that is such a beautiful place. And Bladell Reserve is open year round. Now, the first Wednesday of every month is called Welcome Wednesday. That's because the admission price is pay what you wish. You know, the restaurant scene here on Bainbridge Island is certainly heating up like an oven turned up to broil, enough of the puns, but we decided to ask one of the island's best chefs, Greg Atkinson from Marche, to share some of his favorites. It's a nice big salmon. Once the head chef at Seattle's renowned restaurant Canlis, now Greg Atkinson carves out a culinary life for himself on Bainbridge Island. This is Restaurant Marche, and we do Northwest ingredients with French techniques. So it's essentially a French restaurant, but all the ingredients are from right here on Bainbridge. When Greg's not cooking up local lamb or fresh salmon, he loves to take a bite from Bainbridge's booming food scene. I guess when I'm going out to eat, I'm looking for something that I might not serve at my own restaurant, something I might not make at home, something that just feels like a fun time out. 
one of those fun places is right around the corner from his own. Right outside the front door of one of my best neighbors on Bainbridge Island, it's Blackbird Bakery. And they're famous not only for their great baked goods like cakes and pies and cookies, but also their bread, which I smell every morning on my way to work. And it's Blackbird Bakery's bread that Greg can't resist. When I come here, I always order the toast. It may be just because it's so simple. This one is a nice oatmeal bread with whole wheat. It's super tender and browns up really well. And with my toast, of course, I got to have one of those perfect lattes. They make hundreds of them every day and they turn out right every time. Greg's next stop is mere seconds away at the wood-fired restaurant Bruchato. The heat is quite intense, so things get sort of caramelized on the outside and stay tender and moist on the inside. Really shouldn't come to Bruciata without getting some kind of pizza. Personally, I love their focaccia. It's a puffy pizza crust with just a little cheese and some chilies on top. The contorno is a dish of vegetables cooked in the wood-fired oven. I like this because it just kind of reflects whatever the season is. It's a great way to get your vegetables in a really fun spot. Finally, for dessert, Greg's got a local favorite. I'm at Mora Ice Creamery. They make some of the most interesting ice cream I've ever had. Hi, welcome to Mora. Hello. Here, the ice creams are uncooked, and they're remarkably fresh and delicious. It's an Argentinian style that the original owners established and my favorite of all their flavors is the dulce de leche, which they have just perfectly mastered. Dulce de leche is caramelized milk and sugar, and when that's swirled into the ice cream base and then frozen, it gives the most incredible texture and flavor. I think it's just my favorite ice cream ever. Sure, Seattle may get all the glory, but Chef Greg Atkinson believes the food on Bainbridge has plenty to offer as well. Thanks for the tour, Greg. For the complete list, you can go to our website, king5evening.com. Well, farm to table is, of course, a big thing in the restaurant business, but there's a restaurant here on Bainbridge that is doing sound to table, and it was named one of the best restaurants in the country. Here's Kim with more. Morning light on the quiet sounds is like magic. And this is where Chef Grant Rico comes to gather himself and ingredients. It's pretty special. I mean, classic chef life is noisy and chaotic and intense and stressful. And it's really important from a, like an almost spiritual way to, you know, get out here, get grounded with nature and just remind ourselves that the food that we're eating is connected to the nature around us. The water provides a bountiful harvest he uses in virtually every dish at his restaurant seaweed. But farther out, there'll be a lot more varieties that'll be able to get in the deeper water. In the same way some chefs harvest huckleberries or mushrooms, Grant gathers his chosen ingredients beneath the surface. Edible seaweed is a superfood enriched with protein, fiber, vitamins, and antioxidants. It's renewable. It's one of the fastest growing plants or organisms perhaps in the world. Seaweed has the highest concentration of glutamates, which is an organic compound that creates the umami flavor. Just from that standpoint alone, it's just a way to make your food more delicious. In just minutes, Grant emerges with a bag full of possibilities. This is brown algae or nori. So this is what makes the wrapping of your sushi. There's also dulse. It has a bacony flavor. He'll decide how to serve every piece less than five miles away at his award-winning restaurant, Seaburn. Harvested water will become salt, and the seaweed has endless possibilities. And that's part of where like the real creative inspiration comes from is just like, what does this taste like? How can it be used? How can't it be? His menus included seaweed butter, ice cream, and everything in between. The 
sauce is a special crab broth that we make. Ideally, I think food is the greatest communicator or representation of, of what's going on around us. This dish incorporates Dungeness crab and six kinds of seaweed, an ocean-based work of art. Whatever his guests order, Grant hopes they have an experience, each bite a true connection to the sound, like the one he shares every morning. They get to enjoy this day, this moment on Bainbridge Island and what it has to offer. Thanks, Kim. Grant recently left Seabird to pursue other culinary adventures. Seabird is open for dinner service Thursday through Sunday, and we do recommend reservations. That place is very popular. Still to come, the Bainbridge Retreat, where you can sleep in Middle Earth. But up next, where your kids can play and learn something along the way. Hey there, thanks for coming back to our special all about Bainbridge Island. Now, if you're a coffee lover, no trip to the island is complete without a stop here at Pegasus Coffee. Housed inside this historic building, Pegasus has been serving up espresso and roasting their own beans since 1979. That's long before coffee became a big thing here in the Northwest. If you go, be sure to pick up a dude's donut made over in Port Orchard. Bainbridge is also a great place to take the kids, and we know just the spot. Saint has that story. Welcome to my market. There's a serious run on fruits and vegetables going on at Kids Discovery Museum, where Executive Director Corinne Wolf is handling cashier duties. You got some really good food in here. How can you not have fun being in a children's museum, right? So we get to play every day, get to watch kids learn and grow. This particular van load of squin kids were driven here by Emily Webb and her friends. They seem to love it. We wanted to go to lunch and <laughs> we're still here, so. <laughs> still here because there's so much to do. Play light bright on a giant board, climb into a treehouse, and take the sliding way down or go to work on a construction site with dad. Everything we have here is for kids to do with other people, including the adults that bring them or other kids that they might meet while they're here. Koalas don't even make sound. It's really cool. It's got different stations. So when the kids are at one station, they are entertained for a while. And then when they're done, we can just go to a different station. Your pass is good for the entire day. So Emily's kids really could eat lunch and return. With all of those groceries, you have to believe they're hungry by now, but they're still here. Yeah, we told the kids that we could come back, but um, that was a thumbs down for now. <laughs> Thanks, Saint. The Kids Discovery Museum is open year round, but the hours do change depending on the season, so be sure to check on their website before you visit. Well, there are plenty of places to stay overnight on Bainbridge Island, but only one where you can sleep in Middle Earth. When Rose Linford Combs was 11, she wanted her own hobbit house. And so I told her, you dig a hole, I'll build it. Rose and her friends dug that hole. Her grandfather, Jazz, set about bringing the fantasy to life. I had to go back and watch a lot of Hobbit movies and stills and stuff. 90% of the material was scrounged. We had to buy one sheet of plywood and a couple other pieces. The structure is nestled into a hillside, which provides natural insulation. In the summertime, it's cool. In the wintertime, it's warm. Now that Rose is off to college, her hobbit house turned vacation rental helps pay tuition by hosting visitors to Middle Earth. Actual hobbits, no, but people come in costume all the time. We get them from all over. The guests are smitten. 99.9% .9 positive. What's not to love? This cozy glamping experience comfortably sleeps too. Many visitors leave original artwork. Some of it pretty nice, some of it... Mm -hmm. <laughs> of 
cool place and you can stay at the Bainbridge Island Hobbit House yourself. It's 90 bucks a night. Just go on over to Airbnb. Well, a lot of great ideas have come from Bainbridge Island, but none of them is hotter right now than pickleball. Before he passed in 2019, pickleball co-creator Barney McCallum showed us the very place that he and the late Congressman Joel Pritchard started the sport in the summer of 1965. They named the game after Pritchard's dog, Pickles, because he just kept running off with the ball. It's estimated that now nearly 37 million people play pickleball worldwide. After the break, the Little Bainbridge Distillery that's the toast of the whiskey world. Welcome back to our special show all about Bainbridge Island. We've moved over to a relaxing little spot on the island called Halls Hill Lookout and Labyrinth. This peaceful place was created in 2008 by Debbie and Paul Brainerd, so visitors and locals could come and just chill. Besides the nice views, the spot also has a bronze prayer wheel and a dahlia cart, flowers grown by local farmers, and it's all done on an honor system. Plus, there's a huge 36-foot stone labyrinth laid out on the ground. The Brainerds donated Halls Hill to the Bainbridge Island Parks and Trails Foundation. Another place on the island that'll lift your spirits is a local distillery making some of the best booze in the world. These are 53 gallon barrels. No one starts off doing things perfectly. Just ask master distiller Keith Barnes. We were the third distillery in the state. And so all of the ugly teenage years are behind us. Less than a decade later, Keith's company, Bainbridge Organic Distillers, is all grown up and producing some of the best spirits in the state. I had a firm belief that, that you can make an organic product that is uh, as good or better than anything else that's out there. We have our Battle Point Whiskey. We have Bainbridge Legacy Vodka. We have uh, Vanilla Vodka. We have two gins. Both of them use a little bit of Doug Fir. But it's another liquor they produce that's put Bainbridge on the world whiskey map. We didn't really set out to build a Japanese whiskey, but we set out to build a whiskey that had a connection to that place. That place is Yama, a village built on Bainbridge in the 1880s where Japanese immigrants lived while working at a local mill. When efforts started to help document and preserve artifacts from the site, Keith's distillery set out to help. Well, the idea was to build a whiskey that had some Japanese influence to it, uh, and we would carve off the vast majority of the profits from that, and those would be donated to uh, Bainbridge History Museum. Yama is made from unmalted barley that's grown up in the Skagit Valley, and it uses uh, a Scottish whiskey yeast. But what really sets this whiskey apart is the wood they use to mature it in. And Mizunara oak is kind of a cult thing. Uh, the Japanese use it very sparingly. Little did they know the whiskey they were making would be so well received. Yama was named Craft Whiskey of the Year by Whiskey Advocate magazine, an honor Keith was unaware he won until a friend told him. My guy from William Grant & Sons called me up and he goes, hey, congratulations, you won Craft Whiskey of the Year. I didn't even know. And then it received global accolades when it was named Best American Grain Whiskey at the prestigious World Whiskies Awards. It just goes to show you don't have to be big to be the toast of the town. Everything came together in just the right way at just the right time, and we were able to make something that was special enough that people recognized it for being great. Thanks, Kim. If you want to stop by Bainbridge Organic Distillers, their tasting room is open Wednesday through Sunday, 12 to 5. When we come back, more from beautiful Bainbridge Island. All right, wrapping it up from here on beautiful Bainbridge Island. If you'd like to learn more about any of the people or places that you saw in tonight's show, just go to our website, king5evening.com. We're going to leave you with some more beautiful sights from the spectacular gardens of Bladell Reserve. Enjoy it, and we'll see you next time.